channel i'm doris and i'm here to share with you about my stock account update today my stock account has made a loss of 2994 us dollars us stocks closed higher monday waiting for its cpi data more troubling for american consumers than tuesday cpi an inflationary pressure could come from supply chains first let's take a look at my account Today, my account, including the post market price, has made a loss of more than 4%. Right now, the net asset of my account is $68,000. So, as today, SQQ has made a loss of 4.8% to $35.1. And the DRV has made a loss of 2.51% to $40.36. Today, the market showed an overall gain. Industrial Dow Jones Industrial Average showed a gain of 1.11%. Nasdaq Composite rose for 1.48%, and S&P 500 Index rose for 1.14%. 1, All three major indexes showed a gain of more than 1%. Today, the tech, tech stocks also showed a gain. Consumer infrastructure rose for 2.57 percent and consumer electronics rose for 1.77 percent on the other hand oil and gas showed a loss a slight loss of 0.34 percent and the auto manufacturers showed a loss of 0.04 percent the s p 500 rebounded after suffering their biggest weekly loss in two weeks Investors waited for U.S. Tuesday C key CPI data to gauge the inflation situation and its potential impact on Fed policy. All three major U.S. indexes fell last week, with the Dow one, down 0.17% 1, in the week. S&P 500 fell 1.11% and Nasdaq fell 2.41%, both recording their biggest one-month loss since December. Morgan Stanley believes the selling time is right because the market prematurely believes the Fed will pause raising interest rates and set prices accordingly. Morgan Stanley analyst Michael Watson said, The recent rise in short-term Treasury yields should us suggest that the Fed may maintain a high interest rate policy for longer, but the stock market refuses to accept this reality. He expects the S&P 500 to close at 3 3,800 this year. He says stocks will bottom this spring given deteriorating market fundamentals and arriving arrival of a Fed rate hike and an earnings recession. The current disconnection of share prices and reality has reached levels during the mere bear market. In addition to analyst bearish view, the capital flow data also indirectly supports the background of recent stock market volatility. Investors redeemed a total of nearly $31 billion from U.S. equity mutual funds and ETFs in six weeks from the start of the year to February 8th, the longest net outflow since the summer and the highest ever since the start of 2016. Meanwhile, U.S. investors have invested a net of $12 billion on in international equity funds since the start of the year. A sign that investors are more bullish on market outside of U.S. stocks. This week, investors focused on consumer price index and retail sales to gain insight on into inflation. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said last week that the road to fighting inflation was long. He also noted that interest rates could rise to a higher level than market expected if the inflation data did not slow. Reversing earlier optimism by some investors that they could, they would have stopped soon, Barclays analyst Emmanuel Call said. But from an end of inflation perspective, the risk is that easing financial conditions too early will lead to a rebound in growth expectations, which could be counterproductive. He said, indeed, after the January non-farm payrolls report, some Fed spokesmen this week have raised market interest rates expectations, thus reversing Powell's dovish comments last week. The disconnect between the Fed's own interest rate forecast and market pricing has narrowed significantly, which, pre which, has, which, which has previously hurt stocks. Economists believe the January CPI expects the January CPI to roll 0.4% month on month and 6.2% year on year, and the core CPI to roll 0.4% month on month and 5.5% year over year. 
exchange strategist Mason Issa at TD Security said. This week's CPI report has become the focus, and as there are signs this morning that inflation is stronger than it was saw last year, which does challenge the idea that the Fed may cut interest rates. Analysts noted that the Fed Bureau of Later Statistics released the latest CPI component weight on Friday, and the correction is expected to put upward pressure on the core CPI for January. More troubling for American consumers than Tuesday's CPI, the new inflationary pressures could come from supply chains. Inventory increase by insufficient consumer demand continue to push up warehousing costs. Warehousing prices rose 10.6% in January from a year earlier. Supply chain people expect a surge in daily cost for using containers as a temporary warehouse in the second and third quarters. Financial markets are closely watching the U.S. January CPI. Released on Tuesday, but for U.S. consumers, the supply chain could re- create an upward inflationary pressure and will directly threaten their wallets. This could be a bigger headache too than the CPI. The problem is that rising inventories caused by insufficient consumer demand continues to exert upward pressure on warehousing costs. Managers in the logistics industry. Want to be wary of this con- discontinued source of rising inflation in the supply chain, and consumption could be per- should be prepared for it. Warehouse prices across the Euro, the U.S. rose 1.4 percent in January from December and 10.6 percent from a year ago, according to Warehouse Co. International air, sea, and domestic trucking freight rates fall, but fall to lows in 2022. But Inflationary pressure will remain in the areas where demand grows outweighs supply, including warehousing, domestic parcels, and labor in most of the U.S., according to Brian Work, global chief business officer of Seco Logistics. The media pointed out that one reason for the imbalance between supply and demand for the warehouses is the lack of new storage facilities. No warehouses and distribution centers have full capacity. And there is no room. Some shippers keep their product in con- containers on trailer plates, which creates costs passed to- on to consumers. Because once the shipper takes free time, they have to pay the daily late fee for the departure container. ITS Logistics Paul Brescher, vice president of hauling and multimodal transport, said the stranded containers on the trainers or trailers will cause two costly problems. One is that these containers cannot be used to move the newly arrived containers, increasing the pressure of the entire U.S., especially the inland rail containers. The shippers will be charged for the stranded containers, which is different from the overtime use of containers, may lead to tens of millions of dollars of fine. Brashear expects daily cost of using containers as a temporary warehouse in the second and third quarters of this year. In addition to those fees, he said, warehousing costs are at a historically high levels. Late fees and storage fees are passed on to con- consumers, and that's why we didn't see the price cuts. Rashir estimates that if shippers' inventory imbalance is unbalanced or inventory demand is insufficient, they may have to bear tens of millions of costs every quarter. In addition to weak consumer demand, he warned, the cost of such warehousing would also hurt corporate earnings. From construction to retail, some companies in key sectors of the U.S. economy expect price pressures to continue. The media found many small businesses, which have the largest share of the U.S. economy but often benefit from falling supply chain prices at the latest, believe inflation has not yet pe- to peak. Therefore, the Fed is now focusing more on service sector inflation, especially labor prices, as the Fed f- expects commodity inflation pressures to continue to the fall. But logistics problems suggest there is some solid inflation factor in the com- commodities. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you next episode.